two, and voice no ear can miss. We gather here each life and all to celebrate and sing, to honor creatures large and small, his holiness we bring. Come, let us worship together. Good morning. I'm Sarah Mary and I'd like to welcome you all. Our opening hymn is Morning Has Broken. We have posted a link in the lyrics for those who read in there at the end of the document after the order of service. For those here, the lyrics are on your sheet of paper. Please join me in singing. an old joke about the difference between cats and dogs based on their diaries. A dog's diary. 8 a.m. Food, my favorite thing. 9.30, a car ride, my favorite thing. 10, a walk in the park, my favorite thing. Noon, milk bones, my favorite thing. 1 p.m., play in the yard, my favorite thing. Five o'clock, dinner, oh, my favorite, favorite thing. Eight o'clock, wow, watched TV with the people, my favorite thing. 11, sleeping on the bed, oh, favorite. <laughs> A cat's diary. Day 983 of my captivity. <laughs> My captors continue to taunt me with bizarre little dangling objects. <laughs> they dine lavishly on fresh meat, while the other inmates and I are fed hash of some sort, hash or some sort of fried nuggets. The only thing that keeps me going is my need of escape. I once had a cantankerous cat named Millie who had an obnoxious meow and was born with less than half a stubby, knobby tail. I'm gonna put her picture up here on the altar and you can just, and you can get a look at that stubby, stubby knobby tail. She was born that way. I think one of the reasons that I was put on earth was to love her because she was not especially easy to love. <laughs> I loved her and it had its challenges. Animal behaviorist Temple Grandin says that cats are actually as emotionally wired as dogs, but they don't have dogs' expressive eyebrows. They can't move their eyebrows, so we humans don't read their emotions well. Anyone who has seen a dog cock her head and quizzically wrinkle her eyebrows well know that 
dogs uh, express emotion on their faces. Cats actually emote with their tails. Something we tailless humans have a far harder time understanding. Their implacable, expressionless faces leave us to imagine all sorts of nefarious things going on in a cat's mind. I wonder if my dear cantankerous Millie was a bit emotionally stunted because of her stunted tail. The only emotion I could read for sure was when she was mad and that short stubby tail went. That was it. That's the only emotion she had. Today, we come together to bless the animal companions that grace our lives with their love. People often talk about it, talk about this love as a kind of pure, uncomplicated love, which it is, and well, isn't exactly. Morning, everyone. Hi. Good morning. My name is Fidelity Balmer. I'm the director of religious education. And today I'm going to tell you the story of a beautiful new puppy in my life. Now I have a question for all of you. You get a call from your mom and she says, new puppy, very small, need help puppy sitting. Raise your hand if you're in. Who's in for puppy sitting? I've got a lot of people. Okay. Who's a little more skeptical? First day. We've got some skeptics. All right. So I thought about this. I said, free access to mom and dad's fridge all day. I'm in. And a beautiful new puppy. What could possibly go wrong, right? What could possibly go wrong? What I did not know is that a puppy's first day home is very challenging. Brand new puppy, fresh to the world, at this point, just a few weeks old. I get there, and the first thing I notice is that this dear puppy cruiser, when he's not actively being held, he is done. It's the end of the world. Yipping, moaning, sighing, rolling around, barking, as though the entire world is crumbling, right? Uh, when cruiser is actively being held on this first day, you would think he would lie there quietly. No, no, he's biting your hair, he's licking your face, he's being a total, complete, total squiggle worm wandering all around. So I went back and forth all day, right? Do I put the puppy in the, the little cage where he can run around, but he's barking? Or do I hold him in my lap and, you know, get attacked? It was a balancing act, balancing act. Finally, I could not take it anymore. And here's how I knew I could not take it. I was covered in dog poop, for one, <laughs> covered in dog pee, two, three, covered in my own snot and tears, four, my hair was completely frazzled, and five, I was wandering around the house with only one sock on. Now, in fidelity language, if you ever see me wandering around with just one sock on my foot, wherever I am, please ask me if I'm okay. So that's how you know things are not going on. So I pick up the phone and I call my friend Cheyenne and I say, Cheyenne, I just, you need to get here. She's like, okay, I'm on my way. So I want to imagine the scene, right? You you open the door and you are the friend who's been called to come to this event. You open the door and your friend is covered in dog pee, dog poo, is crying, red, blotchy. And I say, Cheyenne, thank God you are here. <laughs> you have to save me. So Cheyenne was totally calm, very, handled the situation very well. She comes inside, we talk, we pet Cruiser, and uh, she gets me through the next couple hours of my um, assignment, my eight hour assignment with Cruiser that day. Now, what I want to tell you is that it took some time for me and Cruiser to heal from this first day, right? I, it did not happen immediately because I fled, I fled the house and Cruiser really, you know, got to me. And my mom can attest, it was not easy. Cruiser and I had to have a lot of conversations. I had to tell him, Cruiser, you really, you really got on my nerves. You know, I really couldn't take it. I was trying to do a staff meeting and you were eating my hair. What's up with that? Right? And Cruiser, in his own special way, found a way to forgive me too. Right? 
So we always think in our lives that we are the ones taking care of our pets. We give them love, we give them affection, we take care of them, we brush their teeth, we feed them, we groom them. And this is all absolutely true, that we humans are taking care of our animals. And what I learned is that our animals are our teachers too. They're our teachers too. And the way I knew this is that for me, it taught me the lesson of taking care unconditionally of a completely vulnerable creature on this earth. So one of my favorite moments from my first day with Cruiser is one of those moments when he was yipping and yapping and um, I learned about cavapoos that they are very attached to their, their humans, need to be with their humans most of the time. He was yipping and yapping, the entire world was falling apart because he wasn't being held. So I finally, you know, this is his big little kennel thing. I, okay, we're in. I sit down on the floor, right? The dog poop, the dog pee. I sit down, he comes up to me and then all the yipping and yapping comes to a complete and total close as soon as I hold him in my arms, right? So end of the world, Cruiser can't take it anymore. All he needed was to be held. And in that moment, I kid you not, I am sitting alone in my house before Cheyenne gets here. I burst out sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't take it. This small, vulnerable, beautiful creature, right? Uh, a sacred moment of connection with one of our furry friends. So that is the lesson I hope to impart to you today, that our animals always have lessons to teach us, and we are taking care of them, but they are also teaching and taking care of us. Now, I heard a rumor I don't know. Is this is this true? Is Cruiser here today? I heard that. I heard that Cruiser might be here today. Oh, Cruiser. Yeah. Now Cruiser loves gentle kisses, and you can tell that he's doing much better with his humans. So this is our love bug. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Oh, the number of church dogs that we have is growing. Welcome, Cruiser. Welcome to the staff. <laughs> Each Sunday, this congregation gives away our collections to an organization in the larger community or to funds that help people in our own church. We now invite you to donate online or by text. Those who are on Zoom will get the link and the text to give number posted in the chat. Here in person, you can write a check or, um, or donate cash after the service. There's a basket right back over there. To do that, if you wish to text to give, the text to give number is 844-9. 1779. Now, as this gets more of a habit, I think this is going to be in your phones and we won't, oh, you know, we'll keep repeating it and posting it. And I'll repeat it one more time here 844 901 1779. And again, after the service, if you wish to give cash or checks, there's a, there's a basket for that. Our offering today goes to the Lift Up Your Voice to End Homelessness Motel Fund, which provides people facing emergency situations with a safe place to sleep for a night or two. Sometimes we can get a call about someone who say is very ill and whose condition would be made worse by sleeping outside, which is a lot of conditions. Uh, and recently we received a call from the police about a woman who had been a victim of a crime and needed a safe sp space to stay for two nights until she could board the train that would take her out of state to be with family. And it always feels so good for all of us who are on the giving side of this that we can say, yes, we can help you. We can say yes because of offerings like the one today. So please give generously as you always do. A friendly face, the kind of face 
that melts you with a grin. The kind of eyes that welcome you the minute you walk in. A tender glance you simply can't refuse. At times like this, a girl should use a dog. He listens when you tell him things There's nothing you can't say And unlike certain people You can teach him how to stay And if the world is giving you fools He cheers you up by chewing up Things like that that make you choose a dog. Other people need romance, dancing, playing around. Other people need constant fun. Well, I'm not one. I have my feet on the ground. I got a dog. Yay. We are grateful for the generosity of this congregation, which helps us connect to each other and all of creation. Threads woven in many threads, weaving many shapes into this tapestry of life we call you. Thank you. Part of staying connected within our community is sharing with one another the great joys and sorrows that great is our lives. We place stones in water for both the celebrations and sorrows in our hearts. The ripples that go out represent the way that something touches our hearts, uh, that touches one of us, travels throughout the community to touch us all. I invite you now to speak into the gathered community or right into the Zoom chat, the names of those you wish to celebrate, memorialize, or those in need of the loving embrace of this beloved community. And please feel free to continue to add to the chat even after the silence. Our Dana will now place one final stone in the water for all the joys and sorrows yet unspoken in the silent sanctuary. May we be truly grateful for all that is our life. We offer a reading in two voices when your best friend has four or so legs by the Reverend Teresa Nina Soto. What it means to have a pet is to love someone who speaks a language you do not. A dog will bow and prance, a cat 
will purr and blink. A guinea pig will giggle and squeak. A long time ago, a friend of mine had a dog with soft ears and considered herself the pup's guardian. Such a gentle way to think of protecting and caring for a friend. Such a small gesture of respect for a source of boundless love. The dog's pink lolling, pink tongue lolling in a goofy grin. The cat convinced that kneading and grooming are crucial to this day. A bird asking for a treat, bending a wing to wave. These are friends, they are loves. It's kind of a surprise that you should love someone so much who would eat the butter on the table <laughs> and get endless hair on the sofa when they aren't even supposed to be on the furniture. When they are called companion animals, it, it's such an open, tender truth. The endless cuddles, and tricks and loyalty, the comfort of fingers to fur, big, adoring eyes. For a few moments, just a few, because I know wiggly puppies don't necessarily meditate brilliantly. A few moments of silent meditation. long after Unitarian Universalists started showing up at rallies and demonstrations in our bright yellow side with love t-shirts or stoles, we quickly became known as the love people in the larger community. What a great thing to be known as. We are the love people. Many of our congregations begin each service reading some version of this covenant. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its prayer. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. Yet, until someone pointed it out to me recently, I never noticed that the word love isn't anywhere in our seven principles. Huh. My guess is that in the 20th century, we leaned more into the life of the mind, thinking our way uh, brilliantly to solve the world's problems with a greater reliance on reason, which is often attributed to the Unitarian side of our tradition. These days, many express more resonance with the universalist side, which arises from a sense of a universal love holding us all. It is more complicated than that, of course, yet perhaps we do need more reminders of the transformative possibilities of the love side of things. And what better teachers of love as And what better teachers of love than the critters that we share our lives with? We do talk about puppy love, animal love as pure and uncomplicated. Yet I have found in living with both dogs and cats that these relationships are actually complex and nuanced. They are relationships that ask something of me relationships that go both ways, as Fidelity realized, 
with the puppy cruiser cruising through her life, all of a sudden. Having two dogs, having two dogs, two dogs, two very different dogs, added a whole bunch of layers and levels to all of this, this, uh, this mixed, these relationships. It is true that cats and dogs and humans evolved together and that evolution changed us all. Sometimes when I'm out training my dogs, um, someone will come up jokingly and say, well, just who is training who here? And I hear in that an implication that the human is the one who's supposed to be in charge, the dominant alpha in the relationship. And yet in my relationship with my pups, I have come to wonder if we aren't imposing a human narrative of dominance onto our pets. To me, it is very clear that we are training each other, which is exactly how it always has been. And it's a great way for it to be. I, I learn as much from Scout and Jasper as they learn from me, uh, they learn from and about me, there is a reciprocity that is always there. They do learn to sit and not run out into the street most of the time. And I learn about who needs to stop and sniff and how to throw the ball for each of them. And it is a little different. And I actually learn to stop and smell the roses too. Um, our pets have so much to teach us about love and tenderness, about loyalty and nurturing relationships. So on this day, we take time to bless them all. And so now we are coming, yay, to the point, to the place of to join in this those here those at home those carried in memory with these words adapted from karen johnson animal uh, animal companion blessing you have a response which is very simple it simply is we bless you and um i'd like you to And let's practice this once all together. We bless you. Okay, one more time. We bless you. Good. I'm going on. Okay. Yeah. Ours is a world alive and allowed with the presence of creatures and critters. Animals abound, interwoven in our human lives. This is the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. And so we bless you. Us own animals who are various, often metaphorically and sometimes literally. Many of us feel we are better human animals. We have known animals as part of our story. And so we bless you. Not all animals are cuddly and cute companions of solace and delight. Animals are deeply wild, you tell them. Animals are deeply wild, even the, even the ones we call tamed. May we always show proper respect for this wild way as we bless you. There is also the hard reality that some animals suffer needlessly at our hands. Animals who encounter human cruelty, left hungry or maltreated, habitat stolen without regard for our mutual interdependence. Most especially for those. We bless, bless you. you. There are animals in our daily lives whose labor makes our own lives easier, safer, more accessible. Animals who lend us their fur or hair or feathers or fleece or milk or eggs.
that we might be sustained without their loss of animals whom we raise or hunt passionately and with the wider world existence. May we move ever closer to that ideal to live lightly on the earth, taking only what we must and no more. And so we bless you. We bless all animals. We bless those we know and love. We bless those unknown to us who have benefited our lives. We affirm the call to live in right relationship with all other animals on the earth. May we bless presence as part of the animal family and ever and always. We bless you. Okay, and now we are coming to our pet parade. I'm gonna ask you just to bring your animals down the middle and um, Fidelity, Andy and I are gonna bless them as you come by. And so we, they're already well and blessed now, but we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We also have, I realize that we only, we mostly only have dogs here today, which makes a lot of sense. It's outdoors and all kinds of stuff. But, and we have, a communion table laid out with treats for. Oh yes, the treats. Um, we've got pinch fries, a delicious treat for all birds. We have carrots. We have kitty treats. We have dog treats. We have hamster, turtle, guinea pig, and adult rabbit treats. And we have mealworms. Uh, a friend of so. so so they've been blessed and now we have, they're, they're definitely dog wafers there, but if you have another critter at home, take whatever you need, either as you go by or you can back in for the service. And so um, forward to Remind me of this little blood box name. Bless you so much. Oh, hi. Who is this? Roxy? We bless you. Don't forget to grab Oh, 
Okay, so you all are standing, so it's perfect time to just sing a, sing our closing hymn and move on out of here. All right, everybody, our closing hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful, which you may or may not be familiar with, but the words are on your sheet of paper. So, everyone. And on the link. And on the link at home from and Zoomers at home. Oh, <laughs> 
remain standing for extinguishing the gels and the benediction, and then we'll head on out. It's actually the call. So please uh, join me in repeating our closing words. We extinguish this flame. We extinguish this flame. But not the light of truth. The warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. Those we carry into our lives until we are together again. So quick reminders, uh, the hat will be passed for a gift for uh, Jen and her husband and their baby girl. Uh, also, this box will be over on the welcome table for memories for Joe Hutchins. And, um, and people on Zoom, you will be placed in breakout rooms on Zoom. And if you, want, if you have your critter with you, you could share them with each other. I think that that would be a lovely thing to do. Uh, and there's coffee. There are people who made us some coffee. It's over in the corner over here and you know, take it, get back in the shade as fast as you can. So those of you who are home at Zoom and I know that there, it's a different experience, but you're not as hot as I am, I hope. I leave you, you, bleh, I leave you with these words adapted from Susan Carlson. Today, we have celebrated the ways we upright walking two-legged wanderers share our lives with the four-legged lounging, lunging, and leaping among us. The winged warblers, the slithering, sliding, snaky beings, the circling cupboarders in a watery world. Here, we have expanded our circle to embrace them all, for we are all a family sharing one planet. May you go forth aware of a deeper relationship with the diverse beings in the interdependent web of all life, remembering our common needs for safety, care, respect. Go forth in peace, go forth in love, go forth to bless and be blessed. May it be so. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you.